Wouldn't it be easy if you just bought a property, refurbished it, let it out and just got paid on a monthly basis and never heard about the property again? Well, it doesn't really happen like that. Hi guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. My name's Jamie York and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down everything you need to know about property management, what it is, what to look out for, what are the pitfalls, and should you get a property manager in your business in the meantime? In the meantime, I would be massively appreciative if you could hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps me push out this content to more people, just like for yourself, looking for help right now. And if you are interested in property investment, business, and getting great returns on your money, make sure to hit the subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you can be notified about more videos coming up. So as I said, wouldn't it be amazing if that's how property worked? Well, in theory, that's how it should work. You know, you buy a property in a decent area, you make sure it's refurbed already to a good standard, or you refurbish it to a decent standard. You then find a great tenant that's really grateful for you putting a roof over their head and creating a home. And then you're also gonna be really grateful because they're gonna pay you for the privilege of that and never hear about it again. Well, it doesn't really end up like that. Tenant tend to break your property, complain, there's leaks, there's the boiler gone, smashed windows, they're complaining about the neighbours, the neighbours are complaining about them, they have parties and of course the massive Doberman dog when they asked if they could have a goldfish in there and that's not quite what you meant when you said pets may or may not be allowed. Well, not all tenants are like this. We actually have some really great tenants in our properties. They pay all the time, um, never have any issues with them. You don't hear anything about it. You do your inspections and um, the property is well looked after. But when should you get it managed? Should you self-manage? Well, this is gonna depend on a lot of situations. First of all, let's just cover the ones where you absolutely should have a manager in place. If you have uh, a property in another country, Okay, there are a lot of, or a lot of our investors are overseas from Hong Kong, South Africa, uh, Japan, etc. the UAE. It makes complete sense having a property manager looking after the property because the last thing you wanna be doing if you're in another country is getting a phone call directly from the tenant, them going, look, this has happened, you need to send someone around and having to deal with that on an ongoing basis. Goes the same, by the way, if you're out of area. If you're in London and you're investing in Leeds, which is where I'm based, incredible place to invest. Actually, no, it's not. Stay away from it. Um, then you're going to want a manager in place, okay? Because they're going to take care of the day-to-day -day needs of your tenant. And if you've watched a lot of my video and my content, you know I talk about the value first principle a lot. I believe in adding as much value to other people. And this is because, hey, it's nice to be nice every now and then, right? But also from a business perspective, I'm a massive believer in that if you add value to people's lives, they will tend to pay you for it on an ongoing basis. So another reason you might wanna consider getting a property manager in place is if you're a portfolio landlord or you're intending to be a portfolio landlord. Ultimately, it's that time versus money principle. A lot of people, when they start out investing, what you seem, seem to value the most, and I did too, by the way, is you value the money the most. Well, as you get bigger and you start circulating, what you should realize is you can always make an extra thousand pounds or million or billion, maybe not a billion, but eventually, right? But each pound, you can earn another one, it comes and goes, but time, I won't waste any more of yours, is gone. Okay, once that second's gone, it's gone forever. It's this bank that is emptying one second at a time, one day at a time, and you wanna utilize that as much as possible. So for me, I'd much rather pay somebody else for their time and take away from mine, okay? Now, whilst we're talking about that, the cost of time, what does it cost for a property manager? Because there's several reasons maybe why you wouldn't wanna get a property manager in the first place. So. A typical cost that you're gonna come between is eight and 12% plus that. Okay, now I'm gonna break this down because I think this is really important because people are motivated by money, okay? So 8% in my experience, I'm not saying everyone by the way, but this is good if you're thinking about becoming a property manager of how to price yourself. I don't pay 8% for mine at all. I pay more money than that. Um, and I'll tell you where I'm paying um, in a moment actually, because it will help you understand my principles and how it comes around to it. My experience of 8% people is 
they do the bare minimum. They're not proactively looking to do an amazing job to look after the tenants, to add value to your tenants, which ultimately, by the way, you want. I get that it's an investment, but actually it might be your house, but it's their home. And if you can make it an amazing home for them, they're more than likely to treat it that way, spend money on it and stay there for a lot longer. And ultimately, if you've got somebody that's outsourcing everything and it's an online agent, usually doesn't work well for me. Just my personal opinion. 12% for me is a little bit too much, okay? I think it's asking for a lot because most buy-to-lets, if you've got a good buy-to-let, doesn't really require that much effort if you've got great tenants in there. Let me tell you what I end up doing. So because of the portfolio that we've got, and we've got a, a modest but sizable portfolio, enough to negotiate on positions, is I know my agents would go to 8% if I put all of my portfolio with them, okay? Now, it's a great negotiation price, and it's a great deal for them as well. But let's just think about this logically. If there's a house, what an agent doesn't do, and this is where you might want to consider, and I'll link back to why you wouldn't want to use one. If there's a house that's there and it's £700 a month, and then there's another house here for £700 a month, but the agent is letting it out, and on this one they're getting, you know, let's say 10% plus, but on this one they're getting 7%, well, not plus, 7%. Logically speaking, even on a subconscious level, what are they going to be doing more of and focused on? Is it going to be the 7% one that they're getting? Or is it going to be the one they're getting 10%? Hopefully you said, well, logically it's going to be 10%. And you might be thinking, no, surely not, because they're going to show people around. Though, Look, people aren't stupid. People are motivated by money. There's, if there is a loophole, they will take care of it because they're salespeople. I definitely do. Why wouldn't you, right? You go for the path of least resistance and the path that's going to make you more money. So if I were a letting agent and I knew I've got five properties on the books, but this one pays me really well. I love the landlord. They look after me. They give us treats. And then there's all of the other people that all they care about is getting our prices down. I know I'm going to be going to the tenant. Hey, look, I've got an amazing property. We've not even put it on yet, if we haven't, or we've just put it on, but you're going to want to see this one first. It's in such high demand. That's the one I'm going to take tenants to first. That's the one I'm really going to make an effort selling and getting them to sign up on the spot right there. So to give you an idea of what we pay, we typically pay 11% plus that for our rentals. That is higher than average for the area, but I don't mind paying it. I think they're exceptional at what they do. They add a a massive amount of value and service to us and I never need to hear about my properties unless it's absolute necessary and in my experience I've had really bad letting agents in the um, in the past and man property managers um, and it just goes tits up and the properties just aren't well maintained they don't have the inspections and things start to go wrong and ultimately the value from your property is over the long term not just the next five to 12 months okay so with that in mind, it is important to understand, let's, so, let's go with 10% because this is where a lot of your profit is going to go, okay? And I'll do the example with a thousand pounds. I know it might not be representative of a rental in your area, but if you factor in, let's say you've got 500 pounds worth of costs on this, which is pretty typical. It's gonna be your mortgage, your voyage, your maintenance, whatever. It might even be a bit higher, but just bear with me here. If you've got 10% plus VAT on there, and most people aren't VAT registered if they're portfolio builders, some of you will be, which is great, that's going to be 10% plus VAT, which is the equivalent of 12%, that's going to be 120 pounds. Okay, now 120 out of your 500 pounds profit is almost 25%, it's around 24% of it. Okay, that for me is absolutely staggering. So 24% of your profit has just gone paying somebody else to do that. For me, it's worthwhile because, you know, it's a short term gig, which I'll get to in the, down the line. But it's really worth thinking about with that cost going out. So are there alternatives? Would I just not use them? Well, Yes and no. If I were local to my property and it's a well refurbished property and I know it's going to attract great tenants into this property, what I would personally be more drawn to is a tenant find. 
A tenant find is when an agent will go out there and do all of the necessary checks at the beginning, okay? Now, they are gonna charge you for this and it will be a decent chunk of the month's money. Um, usually it's three to four weeks, but you can negotiate that dependent on your area. Probably about 500 pounds, okay? Now, the reason I really like tenant fines is there's a lot of regulation you might not be aware of um, when taking in a property and you usually don't care about it until you're getting a tenant out of your property and I'm going to explain. If a tenant moves in and they haven't been given the correct AST, um, an e a copy of the EPC, the Energy Performance Certificate, if they haven't signed a document and read over the terms of the let agreement and the right to rent guide for the UK right now, it is not always, but almost always illegal to serve them with a Section 21 notice or a form of notice to kick them out of your property. So for example, not that you'd want to, but if a tenant was causing a load of issues down the line, if they weren't paying you and you wanted to evict the tenant, it is so much harder to near impossible to do if you didn't get that documentation right in the first place. And for me, I'd much rather not take that liability on. And of course, I'm the owner of the property. I am the landlord, so it always falls down to me with the responsibility. But ultimately, I would prefer to pay somebody separate to go out there and do that tenant find and take that liability and obligation to themselves and give them a strict criteria of exactly the type of tenant within the boundaries of the law that we can say um, that we want in our properties. So again, I'd only do this if the property were local to me um, and I'd want to build a relationship with that person. And if you've got a great relationship with two or three tenants, as long as they don't take the mick, normally it's absolutely fine to self-manage. However, if you're looking to do this to scout a big portfolio and you want 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 properties, which by the way, might sound crazy for some of you, but is definitely po um, potentially possible over your lifetime to get over 100 properties, outsource in the meantime, okay? Just utilize other people's time, take the headache away from yourself and focus on your growth. I prefer to spend my time focusing on sell, focusing on marketing, focusing on putting myself out there, focusing on increasing my active income and utilizing that active income to purchase more property rather than worry, worried about 30, 40, 50 quid in the background, which is more typical of our management fees um, and, and focus on growing that portfolio. So I just want to give my final thoughts on this, on how you take it a step further, because stage one might be the situation where, you know what, I'm going to use a tenant find, we're going to put TF on there, because I want to outsource all of the responsibility and effort of, you know, driving around, showing tenants around, all of that, and then I will self-manage. And then what typically happens is it does this sort of full circle because what we're going to get in place is a property manager. And then once we've got that property manager and they're doing a really great job with it, it sounds a bit brutal, but this is business. At a certain point, it no longer makes financial sense to outsource it to a property manager. So say for example, uh, you know, I wouldn't do this at a break even point, but maybe at 3,000 pounds, something like that of a very rough estimate, which might not, well, it is a lot of money, right? So let's say you've got um, properties where the rent is 750 pounds. That means, let's scrap the VAT just to make this simple. You're getting charged 10% of 750 pounds. So 75 pounds per property that's coming into this, that's gonna be 40 properties. 40 times 75 is 3,000 pounds. Now, I know that's a staggering amount of properties. It is a big portfolio, but trust me, once you get this momentum, you will start buying more and more regularly, and it might be a five-year journey, but bear in mind, that's a profitable situation. With 3,000 pounds, you can hire somebody, have marketing costs, and hey, it might end up being a sideline in another business where you manage other people's property, especially if you're mixing this in with deal packaging. If you've got deal packaging in your local area, you've got your own portfolio in your local area, 
and you're able to manage people's properties in your local area, you've got multiple streams of income coming in there, which puts you in a really strong position. So you can see how it goes full circle, where it goes from self-managed to property manager to self-managed. And again, the break-even point of this will probably be more like 1,500. Okay, but why not go a step further, build out your portfolio and make sure you're getting that money in so it goes full circle and you've got another business stream. Hopefully this has been really valuable. If you have got value from this, I'd massively appreciate it if you let me know in the comments what you thought, what I missed, and any questions you've got around property management, I make sure to reply to every single comment that we get. And of course, if you did get value, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this, and make sure to click the notification bell that comes up so you're actually notified when each video comes out. And hey, this is a really important subject in property that most people miss out. If you you know people in the property sector make sure to share this on your social media profile so they can get value too and i'll make sure to see you in the next video